I welcome you all in this presentation related with the subject fundamentals of surface engineering and we are talking about the methods of uh, surface modification for improving the travelogical performance of the components and uh, under this uh, heading we are, have talked about the various uh, processes uh, and they, as you know that there are three different categories of the surface modification techniques, one where just surface metallurgy is modified, the second where surface composition is modified and third where uh, layer of the suitable material is deposited in form of films, coatings or uh, claddings. So, we are talking about the third, uh, second category of the processes where com chemical composition of the surface is modified. And uh, under this uh, heading we have talked about various uh, surface modification techniques. In this presentation we will be uh, talking about the two surface modification processes. One is the chemical vapor deposition and another is uh, boronizing. Uh, so, initially we will be starting with the chemical vapor deposition process. In short it is known as CVD and this is one of the most commonly used process for uh, developing films or for surface modification of cutting tool inserts, cutting tool inserts so that uh, the, so that the life of cutting tool can be enhanced. Uh, in this process, this process is also performed by developing vacuum and it uses the suitable chemical vapors for required chemical reactions so that the suitable compounds through chemical reactions at the surface can be formed for enhancement of the properties. So, this is uh, the process in general. So, what we use in this process uh, basically one chamber which is made of the uh, stainless steel uh, is uh, used it is uh, connected with the suitable vacuum pump for creating vacuum and then uh, inside we have uh, the suitable compartments for putting in the components to be modified for surface uh, property enhancement. So, here like since it is most commonly used for improving the uh, properties of the cutting tool inserts. So, we will be placing the cutting tool inserts in the different compartments. Uh, these inserts may be of uh, like uh, the tight uh, tungsten carbide, nickel based tungsten carbide or uh, cobalt tungsten carbide. These may also be of the HSS. So, uh, these inserts uh, which are made of these uh, materials are kept in this compartment and then after creating the vacuum the chamber is filled in the with the suitable chemical gas mixture. So, like nitrogen, hydrogen and titanium chloride uh, gas mixture is filled in the chamber and it is also made with the suitable arrangement uh, for heating of the chamber. So, we have uh, the suitable heaters uh, in this uh, stainless steel chamber for uh, increasing the temperature. So, the temperature uh, inside the chamber is quite high enough like 800 to 1200 degree centigrade. So, when such kind of the conditions are created, so tool cutting tool inserts in the presence of the chemical gas mixture uh, under the temperature conditions of 800 to 1200 degree centigrade, these gases are absorbed 
and forms the chemical compounds. So, in this particular case when the chemical compounds react they form over the inserts they form of films or coatings of the titanium nitride or titanium carbide. And once these films are formed over the surface, they these since these are very hard and stable uh, materials, so obviously they will be increasing the hardness of the surfaces as well as uh, and which in turn helps in increasing the wear resistance of the cutting tool edges. And when uh, these kind of the films are formed on other components, it also helps in increasing the mechanical properties, especially the tensile strength and the fatigue resistance. So, this is the kind of the process which is uh, normally uh, uh, used for developing the films and once such kind of the films are formed, uh, not only these are these films are uh, very uh, of very high hardness, but they also offer they are inert for chemical environments and uh, also they are they offer very high resistance to thermal softening. So, uh, since we know that during the metal cutting like say during the metal cutting this is the cutting tool edge, uh, at the cutting edge due to the work uh, performed or uh, work uh, being done for uh, removing the material by shearing lot of heat is generated due to the plastic deformation. Uh, needed for the shearing as well as due to the friction between the chip and tool and friction between the tool and workpiece. So, both these components contribute to the generation of heat and this heat generation causes significant rise in temperature like say during the machining of the steels temperature rise may be like 800 to 1000 degree centigrade. Under such high temperature conditions the surfaces uh, or the edges of the cutting tools which are involved in machining they will tend to get softened. So, it is important whatever the cutting edges of the inserts are being modified they show enough resistance to the thermal softening. So, high resistance to the thermal softening is achieved uh, with the help of a development of such kind of the coating like titanium nitride, titanium carbide on the surface of the uh, uh, cutting tool inserts. Uh, the kind of uh, the, the, the thermal cycle which is used for uh, the CVD process is like this in the x axis we have time and in y axis we have temperature. So, after putting in the component and uh, uh, creating the vacuum within the uh, chamber uh, the temperature is increased and that temperature is held for some time. So, this is holding time and this is the heating zone and then once the holding time is over for, for, for absorption of the, the gases and the completion of the chemical reactions to form the required compounds the system is cooled. So, this is the kind of the thermal cycle which is used for performing the uh, chemical uh, reactions uh, as well as for performing the uh, chemical vapor deposition process. Uh, so, uh, in light of this if we see there are uh, uh, there are certain advantages related with this process that it is able to increase the surface hardness significantly which helps in increasing the uh, cutting tool life especially with regard to the tool as well as it also helps in increasing the tensile strength and the fatigue resistance of the 
component and uh, but apart from the positives associated with this uh, chemical vapor deposition process there are few limitation since the rise in temperature uh, or the kind of temperature which is used during the chemical uh, vapor deposition process is in the range of 800 to the 1200 degree centigrade and such a rise such a major rise in temperature of the substrate material uh, can adversely affect the structure and mechanical properties of the substrate itself. So, there is a possibility for compromise with regard to the mechanical properties and structure of the substrate itself. So, this is one major disadvantage which will be increasing the tendency for the deterioration in mechanical performance of the component due to the high temperature exposure. Further, uh, the, the process uh, takes slightly longer to uh, complete the chemical reactions required. So, uh, in order to, uh, to overcome the issues related to the chemical vapor deposition process especially with regard to the higher temperature, further advancement or the development in the in the chemical vapor deposition process have taken place where in the plasma assisted chemical vapor deposition process uh, has been developed and the advantage of this process is that uh, uh, it, it uses the plasma for, uh, for, uh, for absorption as well as uh, realizing the required chemical reactions to form the compounds required. Uh, so, in order to have uh, uh, for the plasma formation in this kind of system again we will be using the vacuum system and if apart from uh, the the, uh, the things which are needed for the conventional um, uh, chemical vapor deposition process it uses one uh, anode and one cathode uh, so that uh, and then power supply so there is one cathode and one anode so and a sufficient potential difference is established in order to uh, convert uh, the, the the gases in form of the plasma so with the help of by putting in sufficient potential difference between the anode and cathode plasma is created and which will subsequently be used for uh, facilitating the chemical vapor deposition process the advantage is that this plasma assisted chemical vapor deposition process is performed uh, at 500 degree centigrade which is significantly lower than the conventional chemical vapor deposition process. Uh, so, the plasma assisted CVD um, offers uh, uh, the, uh, the advantage over the conventional uh, CVD process especially with regard to the temperature at which it is performed. Uh, the plasma assisted is performed at 500 degree centigrade while uh, the conventional one is performed at 1200 degree centigrade. So, this adversely affects the substrate properties because of uh, uh, higher temperature exposure of the substrate as compared to that in case of the. So, the chances for the damage and uh, tendency for the deterioration in mechanical performance of the component in case of the plasma assisted CVD will be lower. If we will take up the typical example where we will see how does the uh, CVD affects the uh, performance of the uh, uh, of the tool life uh, especially uh, the life of the component which is being modified say the cutting tool. So, if uh, in the uh, x axis we have the machining time indicating the tool life in minutes and in the y axis we have tool wear. So, tool wear like say 100, 200, 300, 400 in micrometers and this is in cutting time, cutting time. Uh, so, here like say 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600 in minutes. So, when we develop the, um, the coatings of uh, titanium aluminum nitride then we will see that uh, the life of the tool is not uh, 
uh, improvement in the life of tool is not much say uh, this is the PVD deposited titanium aluminum nitrite and here uh, if we see the chemical vapor deposited uh, the film of the uh, Al2O3 T titanium nitride Al2O3 and uh, TIC and titanium carbonitride. So, these uh, will be in, uh, so if we see the curve uh, for a given uh, magnitude of the tool we are uh, the time uh, it takes uh, the time required to achieve a particular value of the tool wear is very short. So, the tool will be wearing which suggests that tool will be wearing out at a much faster rate to reach like say the 250 micrometer tool wear in case of the TIAL and, and uh, PVD deposited uh, coatings as compared to the case when uh, the CVD method was used for uh, depositing the film of titanium nitride or alumina or TICN. So, this offers the longer to life. Uh, so, this is just an indicative that uh, the CVD offers much longer to life as compared to that of the PVD. So, if we see here CVD offers longer to life than the PVD which means the wear resistance especially with respect to the abrasion adhesion offered by the CVD coatings is much better than the PVD coatings. Uh, now, we will take up uh, the another process uh, which is the boronizing. Uh, like we have seen earlier uh, for modifying the chemical composition of the surfaces, we have seen so many processes uh, like carbon is uh, introduced in the processes like carburizing, nitrogen is introduced in case of the nitriding and mixture of both carbon and nitrogen is introduced in case of the carbo nitriding and cyaniding. So, both these processes introduce the carbon and nitrogen. Uh, uh, as the name appears, so in both these processes it is the diffusion through which the, 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 uh, the required element will be introduced at the surface of the component. So, that uh, either carbon concentration or the nitrogen concentration at the surface and near surface layer can be enhanced for uh, forming the uh, required nitrides or forming the high carbon martensite uh, in case of the carburizing, carbonitriding or cyaniding processes. In the same line, the boronizing uh, is used to introduce the the boron at the surface and near surface layers. So, obviously, it uses the similar concept of the diffusion where the boron rich environment is created all around the component so that the boron can be uh, introduced through the diffusion at the surface and near surface layers of the component. So, for this uh, for uh, introducing the uh, boron at the surface or on the subsurface layers of the component, there are two approaches. One is we can use the gaseous mixture or we can use the pack boronizing method. This is also called pack cementation. So, pack cementation is the solid based process where a powder mixture of the suitable constituents is used and in that uh, mixture the component to be modified is uh, kept at a high temperature for sufficient time so that the boron can get introduced at the surface. So, uh, now we will see uh, boron if, if for an example we use a pack of a suitable mixture like this in a pack of the suitable mixture and 
it will be uh, and the component to be boronized will be kept in this pack at sufficiently high temperature. So, solid powder mixture, mixture is being termed as pack and what uh, uh, this pack consists basically uh, this uh, uh, pack uh, uh, consists uh, the boron carbide which provides the boron for this purpose and then ammonium difluoride ammonium difluoride uh, this act as a activator and then uh, silicon carbide is used as a inert material inert material so uh, the mixture or the pack primarily consists the boron carbide plus ammonium difluoride plus silicon carbide this is activator this is inert material and this is the uh, the constituent which will be providing the boron and in this um, this pack in this mixture uh, the components are kept in a closed chamber at a high temperature. So, the temperature of the 900 degree centigrade is used for boronizing and uh, uh, this mixture will be providing the boron to get introduced at the surface of the component and there is a particular ratio of this mixture where the boron carbide is in proportion of 5, activator is 2 and the balance 93 percent is of the silicon carbide. So, 5 percent boron carbide, 2 percent activator aluminum difluoride, ammonium difluoride and uh, 93 percent of the silicon carbide inert material and this entire mixture is kept at a higher temperature so that the boron can be introduced at the surface of the component. Since uh, in this case the boron is being in, uh, introduced through the diffusion process, so in any case since the boron concentration is more uh, all around the component and that is why it is getting uh, diffused into the component where the concentration is less. So, the surface layers will have the higher concentration of the boron while the subsurface layers will have somewhat lesser concentration of the boron. So, there is up, up to some distance the boron will be getting diffused at the surface layers the concentration of the boron will be high. So, high concentration of boron and here in the subsurface layer somewhat lower concentration of boron exists. So, wherever we have higher concentration iron boride in case of the steel is formed uh, this is a one type boride which is hard and brittle while uh, in the subsurface layer where boron concentration is somewhat lesser another type of the uh, iron boride is formed which is Fe2B type and obviously it is of the somewhat lower hardness and its morphology is of the normally needle shape which we can see. So, this needle shape morphology is also uh, is normally offers the higher stress concentration and a tendency for the cracking. So, it is always preferred that such kind of the morphology is avoided during the boronizing so that the cracking tendency uh, can be uh, reduced. Uh, whenever the boron is introduced at the surface of the component, it, it offers the extremely uh, high hardness and uh, so these iron borides whatever are formed at the surface, they offer extremely high hardness ranging from 1500 to 2000 HV and 
as uh, we know uh, where the concentration of the boron at the surface layers if we see how the concentration of the boron varies with the depth like say 20, 40 micrometers, 60, 80, 100. So, increasing depth, increasing depth from surface in micrometer and in the y axis we have the concentration of the boron. So, obviously, at the surface uh, the concentration is very high. So, like say the 16, 14, 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, 2 like this. So, uh, just at the surface this concentration is very high and then it will be uh, somewhat lower. Uh, then what we will see? Uh, it will be reducing further. So, uh, there are uh, like say this is the band where primarily we will be having the F E B and uh, this is the zone where we will be having the F E 2 B. Uh, this is uh, the layer which is having the higher concentration of the iron boride. Uh, like say greater than uh, 10 or 12 percent and this will be very hard and the brittle layer. So, if we see the structure wise this is the top layer of the iron boride which is uh, being formed like iron boride FEB and below that we get the needle shape iron borides of the Fe2, Fe2B. Uh, which is of somewhat lower hardness. So, this uh, distance, this distance is uh, uh, like say that 20 to 40 micrometer and below that uh, it is lower. So, this is 80 and then 100. So, like say up to 100 micrometer depth the surface has been enriched with the boron concentration and whenever the iron boride insufficient is amount is formed it increases the hardness and it uh, because of increase in hardness we get the increased abrasion and adhesive wear resistance. So, ab adhesion and abrasion resistance is enhanced further uh, it uh, increases the thermal stability means resistance to the softening is increased and this also helps in uh, increasing the chemical inertness once the uh, iron boride is formed. So, uh, now I will summarize this presentation. In this presentation basically I have talked about the two processes. One was the chemical vapor deposition which is primarily used for uh, improving the uh, life of the cutting tool inserts and uh, the another process was uh, uh, boronizing where boron is introduced at the surface for forming the uh, iron borides and borides of the other compounds which are present in steel so that uh, uh, the surface hardness can be enhanced for improve the improved trilogical performance of the component. Thank you for your attention.